from in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing whacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Lister sent us an article from the San Francisco Examiner. San Francisco Examiner was once a um, a daily newspaper that um, was founded by, of all people, William Randolph Hearst. And uh, Dean, I'll update you on this. William Randolph Hearst was the the real life persona upon whom the movie Citizen Kane was based. I know Dean, a lover of fine cinema, and. Um, William Randolph Hearst, indeed, was the man that uh, Citizen Kane was based on. So this is once a daily paper. It is now, uh, over ownership changes and hard times and whatever, it has morphed into an alternative weekly in San Francisco, the Examiner. It's very strange. Can you imagine, like, in L.A., the L.A. Times being, uh, like the uh, L.A. Weekly? (laughs) That's what happened to San Francisco. So a listener saw this article and sent it in. It's called Slacker Guys and Striver Girls When Lazy Men Become Projects for Career Women. (laughs) Doesn't this sound like something we would talk about? You bet it does. Here it is. Says here, the nightmare seems so real that Amy began sobbing in her sleep. In the nightmare, she learned she was pregnant with her then-boyfriend's baby. Only there was no nine months of pregnancy, no long, drawn-out labor. It was just all of a sudden, I'm pregnant, and then, boom, there's the baby, says Amy, a stunning blonde whose green hazel eyes still widen with terror when she describes the dream. The shock of having an insta-baby only grew when she realized the new arrival was about to spit up. She asked her boyfriend, an avid snowboarder who also worked as a massage therapist, to get her a towel. He didn't say a word. In the nightmare, he simply wandered off to his friend's house to get stoned. For a year and a half, Amy had accepted her bow's her bow oh boy, her bow's constant pot smoking. But she remembers that nightmare, which she had about four years ago, as the moment she realized it wasn't a good idea to be with him any longer. He actually woke up. He woke me up because I was crying in my sleep, and so I. I told him about the dream, says Amy, now 30. And he said, that's not how it would be. Her response? (laughs) No, I'm afraid that's how it is. Amy, a Lower Pacific Heights resident who works part-time for a so-called green realty company, while studying to get her master's in business administration, is no gold digger. The nightmare wasn't about her man's income, it was about his attitude. 
Her bad dream was a scene straight out of this summer's blockbuster comedy, Knocked Up, where a phenomenally attractive correspondent for the E! television channel, played by blonde bombshell Catherine Heigl, and a bong-loving slacker dude, played by Seth Rogen, start a relationship after a one-night stand results in an accidental pregnancy. Chances are, even those who miss director Judd Apatow's hit already know the storyline. A lost but lovable slacker meets the overachieving hottie of his dreams. He struggles, wrestling with urges to sink deeper into his prolonged adolescence with his crew of juvenile but good-hearted buddies. His choice eventually comes down to growing up or losing his love interest, by the way. The fact that people don't want to take on babies and the debts of women and don't want to be nagged into putting out the garbage or being told what chores they have to do, being harangued and harassed all the time does not make somebody an adolescent. Not wanting to be bossed around by some hormonal female who's on the rag 28 days a month does not mean I need to grow up. Says here, this trendy plot line has had a stranglehold on recent romantic comedies, especially over the summer movie season. It was dubbed the slacker striver genre by film critic David Denby in a July article in The New Yorker titled... A Fine Romance, the New Comedy of the Sexes. In his essay, he contrasts today's romantic comedies with those of the past, such as It Happened One Night, His Girl Friday, and Adam's Rib, in which lovers actually come together once they become equals. That was, he says, before the lazy lout became a romantic hero, at a time when movies were made in which, quote, men wanted something. As Denby sees it in today's slacker striver movies, women are portrayed as vehicles whose, quote, only real function is to make the men grow up. Recently, pop culture has been turning increasing numbers of women into the romantic saviors. Think of films like High Fidelity, The 40-Year-Old Virgin, About a Boy, Wedding Crashers, and Failure to Launch. In these fantasy films, the slacker dudes often undergo a rapid transformation, fast enough to drive or run or sail off into the sunset with the gorgeous Striver girl. On television shows like According to Jim and King of Queens, slacker dudes play the lazy husbands who somehow convince smart, gorgeous women to marry them. I might remind you that on King of Queens, Kevin James may not have been as hot as Leah Remini, the one who played his wife. But you know what? That was the guy who went out in the UPS shorts and went out and delivered heavy packages and risked back injuries all the time and paid for everything. I don't know how that makes him a slacker. But uh, you see the prejudice in these articles. It says here, what about in real life? Don't count on it, slackers. I say the jig is up. Women like Amy, who is now dating another MBA student, have learned their lessons about dating slackers. While she finds movies like Knocked Up really funny, she knows better than to confuse it with real life. She's figured out what many in San Francisco, not to mention Hollywood, need to realize. A girl who's going places is simply too busy to try to raise her boyfriend, even one who has, quote, potential. That's right, slacker dude. Smart striver girls are just not that into you. And then this story goes on for four pages, and I'm not going to read all four pages to you. But let me just say this. As one who lives alone with my big screen TVs and my two hot tubs and a stripper pole in my bathroom... Somehow I feel that I'm the kind of man that this woman is talking about in this article in the San Francisco Examiner. And let me just say this. It's kind of a reiteration of something I alluded to before. Just because I don't have a woman there barking orders at me, demeaning me, constantly reminding me of what she thinks my shortcomings are, 
constantly haranguing and harassing me to do things that if I lived alone, I would have done on my own without her nagging and cajoling doesn't mean I'm a slacker. And it doesn't need, mean I need to grow up. I'm a grown-up, all right, and I'm grown-up enough to know, to know that I don't need a woman living in my house. I'm grown-up enough to know that, frankly, doing what women want, which is to spend tens of thousands of dollars I don't have, to have babies I can't afford, and to be bossed around all the time uh, by women who are on the rag, being told what to do constantly... These are not things I need in my life. My life is much better being the way I am, living alone. I'm not a slacker. I work hard. I make great money. I now will uh, soon be in possession of two pieces of real estate, two homes, fantastic homes in amazing places. And I've been able to do all of this because I don't waste money on chicks. I don't waste money taking our orders from these little brats. That is why I'm able to do what I have done. And I'm happy, happy, happy. So now what they've done is they've taken guys who like to smoke the bong, or like to hang out with their friends, or like to watch TV, or guys who like to play Xbox, and they group them into a group called Slackers. Now, to me, a slacker is somebody who doesn't work and doesn't make a living. But it's entirely possible that there are people like me who make a great living, make big money, but we just don't want what you call responsibility. We, I don't want babies. I don't want responsibilities. I don't want to be told what to do, when to do it. I don't want to have a schedule. I don't want some woman stamping her little feet and pointing in various directions and telling me where to run and where to jump. That doesn't make me a slacker. That makes me a good customer, a good consumer. Makes me smart. There are plenty of men out there who just want to own big cars and want to have big screen TVs and hot tubs and plenty of hot chicks. That doesn't mean we haven't grown up. That means we're smart enough to know we don't want to spend all of our wealth wasting it on some broad who's going to bitch us out all the time. Why is it people can't understand the difference between a slacker, which is a guy who can't make a living, won't make a living, won't get up off the couch to work, and somebody who works hard but just doesn't want babies and bills all over the place? If I like coming to work the way I do, and then I like going home and playing Xbox on a, on a nine-foot drop-down TV screen, and then getting in the hot tub with some chick... Does that make me immature? I have to know. Tom, Tom, Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Hello? 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 The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas sh- 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 Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate your patronage. Yes, we are talking about this tendency to uh, lump guys together as slackers. And it's everything from guys who are slackers, who don't work, and just sit home and smoke weed all day. And guys who simply don't want to get married or have children or any responsibilities other than going to work. And I'm one of those people. I just don't want any responsibility. I have enough responsibility, okay? I come to work every day. I make a good living. I keep an eye on my finances. And I take care of my house. That's it. I don't want to be having to buy your shoes or look at your credit card bills or help you raise your babies, or be told what time to take the garbage out. I want to go home. I want to hang out with my friends. I want to get chemically altered in one way or another. And then uh, I want to live it up. I've got six big screen plasmas. I've got a, I've got a nine-foot drop-down TV screen. I've got a stripper pole. I've got an indoor and outdoor jacuzzi. I've got a wine cellar. There are people who think that makes me one of these guys. I need to grow up. I've been told this by hundreds of women who write into me, some who call, I need to grow up. 
And there's lots of guys like me. We just, we're not like our fathers and grandfathers. You know, we're not Ozzie Nelson. Ozzie and Harriet. We don't want to get married and move to Wisteria Lane and raise two kids. We're just not interested in that. Does that make us slackers? Does it? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Christy on the Tom Likas Show. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I just have to say that um, I don't think it's fair for um, people to call the guys slackers when there's women out there who sit on their butts all day and do nothing while their husbands are out earning a hard living. Then they complain about the husbands not helping out at home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I've, then I've been with more than one woman time like that. With the family. I have been with more than one woman who moves in with me, enjoys the fact that I make all that money. Then when I come home, she complains that I don't help out around the house. Yeah, or spend have family night. I tell you what, yeah, you know what, you don't have to put up with me anymore. How about you get out? <laughs> I have this girlfriend, and she doesn't do anything all day. She Well, she takes care of her four-year-old, but um, that's her job. And um, she doesn't do anything else all day. She doesn't, you know, help clean up the house. She doesn't help, you know, do the laundry. She just does nothing all day. And nobody says anything about the women not doing anything. Well, uh, that's because nobody has a problem with women not doing anything. And more importantly, not just not doing anything, but then complaining about us when we don't do what they want us to do and criticizing us for the way we do or don't do things. I'm fed up with it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Richard on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, this is Richard. Yes, I just said that. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Hey, um, I agree with you. Um, you know, I work uh, 10 hours a day. You know, I work in, a, in an industry where I hear I rate people every day, you know, talking to them and stuff. And I just like to come home and just relax and sometimes, you know, just kick back, play my Xbox, go in the jacuzzi, you know, do whatever I want to do. And, you know, if they think that's immature or we need to grow up, I mean, that's just some of the times how we were. I'll tell you that. what, anybody who thinks men like us aren't grown up, get lost. Yeah, you know... I mean, I follow your rules and a lot of things, but, you know, I've been with this girl for about a year and a half, and basically she ain't looking for someone to raise her daughter. She pays for her daughter when we go out. Um, like, if we go out, she'll pay for me. I pay for her once in a while, stuff like that. Great relationship. You know, I can't complain. She doesn't – she's financially secure in herself. She doesn't expect much from me, and she don't bother me one bit. If I don't feel like coming over to visit her, she understands. She says, hey, I understand that. You need to relax. You know, kick back, take a shower, do whatever you need to do. And, she, you know, she don't think I need to grow up. She just thinks that's just me just unwinding, you know. Richard, thank you for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mason on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, Tom, how are you, brother? Doing okay. Good, good. Tom, I got a question. Um, how do you go about, you know, if you want to have a kid, but you don't want to deal with, you know, the baby mama and all that stuff, all those problems of getting married? Well, you know, that's fraught with peril. If you make a good living, whoever you have a baby with is going to demand child support from you. Yeah. I mean, I make the money. I, that's, uh, you know, at least of my concerns. I make the money. I want kids eventually, not now. It's a little too young. I'm 25. Why don't you just wait until then? Yeah, but the problem is I don't know if I ever want to get married. <laughs> I, I understand that. But I'll tell you this. You're still better off having a baby with someone you're not married to uh, for the following reason. They can't get you for vagina money if things don't work out. Makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, if you accidentally knock somebody up and she has the baby... Uh, that's hard enough for most guys. Uh, do not marry her. Do yeah. not. Yeah, because you ended all there. Right. No, if they get your money for for that man for the kid. Right. I'm paying for the nails, the shoes, the hair, all of it. That, I'll tell you what, when they live at their place and you live at your place, they have to pay for all that stuff. They have to make payments on their little Honda Civic or their Jetta. 
they have to pay for their clothes, they have to pay for their accessories, they have to pay for the trips to the beauty salon or whatever. Yep. And if they move in, then they lay all that that burden on you. Yep. Let her pay 35 bucks a month for birth control. <laughs> You're right there, Tom. You're right there once again. Why should you pay? You're right. You get stuck with it. You know what I always say? You're so much better off renting than owning. <laughs> you know, if you ever want to drive a Jaguar or a Mercedes or maybe a Testarossa or something like that. Take it for a lease. You know what? You probably won't be able to afford to buy one. Most people can't. But there's plenty of places where you can go rent one for the weekend. <laughs> How about yeah. you just rent one for the weekend? Let someone else worry about the insurance and the maintenance and the, the depreciating value. Ride yeah, over a few speed bumps. It. Yeah, put a little wear and tear on it and then send it right back to the owner. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a good point. And then uh, next year when a new model is out, uh, rent that one. You can always update. Absolutely. Tom, I got one more question. I hear you keep talking about your new property. Congratulations, 20 acres. Yes. I was uh, I was actually just there wine tasting, I think, where you uh, got your new piece of real estate. And that place is unreal. Yeah, it's amazing. Are you uh, near the vineyards? Yes. That a boy. And I'm going to I'm going I'm I'm going to put a vineyard in. There you go. You might even be able to have another cash crop besides the vineyard. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dean wants to put, go come up there and uh, put a cash crop in. Jeez, tell Dean I'll be his business partner anytime. <laughs> All right, time. Nice talking to you. Take me out Kobe style, please, brother. There you go, Mason. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Liam on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Man, today it takes two incomes to not even equal what you used to be able to have with one income back in the 50s. If I get married and I have kids and, and I don't want my wife to work, I'm going to be so far into debt. What am I going to do? Take out a 50 or a 100 year loan on a house and now I'm going to have to rent or you know lease my car? A house that she and the kids will be living in after they kick you out. Oh man, Tom. You know what? Things aren't the same. You know, maybe you are the same as your dad and your grandfather. It's not you that changed. It's the society that changed. And I have adapted accordingly. You have adapted accordingly. Very well. What do we want to do? You going to sign a, a note for a hundred year loan? Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it now the thing to do is buy yourself a house. Yeah, buy myself a house. Buy something I can afford. You know, and and something that you will own until you choose to dispose of it. Hey, Tom, I, I'm right with you. Can I ask you one more quick question? Yeah. You know, you go on a you go out on a date with a girl. Do you think this is like a, a, a range finder? This, this is a little litmus test they give you where, you know, they want us all of a sudden, it's the first date, and they want to go looking at shoes, and they want to go window shopping for jewelry and bug-shaped buttons to put on their, you know, their dresses and, you know, all this ridiculous stuff. Do you think that's like a little test, or do they just instinctively do it? Well, I definitely think you are being tested, and I know they will constantly ask questions. And, oh, I want this. I want that. It's so uh -huh. cute. Look at this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Just like any time a woman wants you to go to the pet store, that's trouble. Oh. Oh. Because they want to buy little puppies and kitty cats, and then they want, to, you, they want you to walk them and feed them. They want to see how you would be with a child. Yeah. It doesn't take uh, an anthropologist or a psychiatrist to figure out what that behavior is all about. Hey, Tom, man, I'm a recent uh, adoptee of yours, and I tell you, you know what? You're on the money. I, I, my friends used to tell me about you, and I, I said, I don't know, man. This guy you know, sounds a little too hardcore for me, you know. I think you're, I think you're right on the money, Tom. Society's changed, and uh, we've adapted accordingly, and... Uh, 
you know, these women, they, they throw these range finders out at us today to see if, if, if we're the new modern progressive man. And you know what? Hey, I don't like looking at bug-shaped, you know, jewelry, all this nonsense. And you know, I don't like sitting in some whacked-out store with this loud music blaring so they can go look at these silly shoes. Exactly like the other 50 pair of shoes they have. Let them live in their own place. Let them spend whatever money they earn, which That's isn't it. usually much, uh, buying all that stuff and being in the loud stores and everything. And then uh, let them look sexy when they come over to see us so we can bang them for three hours and then send them back home. Hey, or you know what, Tom? Do you think, okay, now this is, this is how I feel. I'd actually rather get in the car and drive over there and bang them over there because then when it's time to leave. Oh, that's what I recommend. If you can do that, do it. Yeah, yeah. Because then, when, you know what, I don't have anybody bugging me to go out for breakfast the next morning. Or, you, you never know. take me to brunch. <laughs> How come we never go to brunch? <laughs> you know, Low Santa Monica has a great brunch. Have you ever been to Low Santa Monica? They got a oh. great brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's it right there, Tom. Ever yeah, had that one? Go. It's Sunday morning. She fell asleep in your bed and snored all night. And I and I got two hours sleep, and I'm cranky, and all I want to do is just kick back. I only snow. see you after 11 o'clock at night. We never go to brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Do you know what an engagement ring is, Stephen? It's a symbol. No, it is. I'll tell you what it is. It's divorce insurance. This is the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Reminding you to drink responsibly. For example, it would not be responsible to run out. Make sure you got plenty on hand. 1-800-5800-TIME. Just trying to be socially responsible. Emily on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi! <laughs> I'm very upbeat, apparently. Sorry. Oh, my God. Are you tweaking today? Wow! <laughs> no, I just got to know, who are these women that you hang out with and talk to? Who are these Darling, women? Darling, I'm not hanging out with them or talking to them. I, I, <laughs> I told you now, I, I rent. I don't own. Well, that's good. Good for you. I just don't understand. Like, all these women are apparently just, what, after money? They're like superficial vaginas. No, it's beyond that. The, the, uh, now we're talking about the women who say that men like me who aren't interested in commitment or having children or getting married. We're slackers, and we refuse to grow up, and we're irresponsible. I just want to know, like, it's not fair to lump women together. Like, that's all we care about. I didn't say that's all every woman cares about. I said that uh, women in general are like this, and they generally are. Well, that is no good. That's how it is. But that's not how it is. I yes. don't know any women like that. Well, darling, you wouldn't because your friends are going to be people like you. I guess that's true. You but see, that's, I, that's just not fair to say in general. I like. No yes, it is fair. Like, uh, all men. You know, I don't, like, dear, the, there's a, de- there is a difference between saying that something is generally true and saying all men are all women. And if something is generally true, it can be true of 75% of the people. That's true. So you it's don't, just, why is it that women can't understand the difference between the word all and the word generally? Well, because that's being a woman, you know, you're sitting here. Stupid? Like, yeah, I know. Hours. This is what, to just rip on women? Hey, <laughs> like this hours. is a show for men. Well, it's that's not fair. I have a male point of view. If you like to watch a show where they bash uh, women, uh, bash uh, men, go to Oprah, uh, go to any daytime TV show. Ah, uh, no, thank you. And that's what they're doing over there. Go to Doctor Phil. I guess that's true. It's just that's I don't know. I'm the show for guys. Well, a show for guys where, what, you teach guys to not not like women and that we're generally bad. No! You like women for what they're good for. Which is what? Uh, a place <laughs> a place to unload. 
<laughs> See, that's terrible. That's terrible to, treat, to teach men that. You mean you're not a good place to unload? That's awful. <laughs> Terrible, man. That's a ridiculous thing to say. Uh, but uh, are you telling me you're not a good place to unload? Well, <laughs> that's kind of a personal question. Well, darling, I'm hoping you are. Well, I'm yeah, but I'm a lot more things than just well, that. You I'll know be what I'm the, I'll be the judge of that. But for men, generally, that's our primary concern. Well, that's that's the primary concern of a lot of women too but that's not all we talk about i don't care i see the thing is i say that rather than expecting women to live up to the standards of men to look at women for what they're good for but you know making sister. lunch that's iron, horrible to say that. make my lunch iron my shirt have sex with me and then shut up well that's terrible to say that oh i don't think so at all it's true that's not true. It is if you're a man. It is if you're a man. As I've said so many times, the last woman to live with me nagged me constantly to take the garbage out. Well, I'm sorry for you. That's no good. She That's how most women, herself. that is how most women are. Well, you need to stop talking to most women then, apparently. Well, that's, that, that's mostly what you mean out there. Well, I don't know where you meet these women because I haven't met any of these women. Darling, again, your friends are people like you. I guess that's, that's true. That's how they became your friends. I guess that's true. Yeah, you but don't date terrible. women. And you see, if you were dating women, you'd meet all kinds of women. Yeah. Not just the ones you're friends with. True. And you would true. see what kind of women are generally out there. Well, that's it just, I don't know. It's just very sad. <laughs> Boo freaking who? <laughs> All right. Well, I have to go to work. Good idea. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, thanks. It's been nice talking to you. I'm sure it has been. Angela on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm great. I just wanted to comment on some of the things that you're saying when you use the word generalizing um, and categorizing certain types of people, you're categorizing in this instance women, and it, it's it's hard for me to understand how can you not categorize and generalize all white men. Well, it's done all the time. You know, it's, done all the time. it's done all the time. It's done all the time. I'll tell you what. Turn on the TV right now. It's being done somewhere on some channel. It's done all the time. Um, you know what? I'm sure it is, but that's not the general consensus of women. I mean, I've always worked. I put myself through college. Somebody's and watching these years. shows. Somebody's watching Oprah. There's a lot of people watching Oprah. I'm, I'm sure that they are watching Oprah, but that's not the general. And men get thrashed uh, on that show all the time. But you know what? Can I just say, you know, you're really breeding hate towards women to these young men because that that's definitely Why, not because I tell there. the truth. Everybody wants to be loved because I tell and the I'm truth. Sure you even want to be loved, Tom. I'm sure you're really lonely. And Darling, as I have lonely, said repeatedly, as I, you, you don't pay attention to what I say. I said, I, I said, I know, well, I know, and that's why you, that's why you don't even know what you're talking about. No, I said on this show, I said on this show yesterday that I have never been more appreciated by women than I am today. Now yeah, that I won't. to pay for the pole dancers and the prostitutes. No, darling, I, I've never, I have never, ever, not one time, uh, ever, uh, paid for a prostitute or a stripper, ever. Ever. Okay. Ever. That's why you just mentioned that you have a pole inside of your yes. bathroom? Yes. Yes, I, I do, and it's amateurs only. Okay. I'm sad what you're doing to these young men. And oh, these I'm just telling the truth, there. dear. That's all I'm doing. I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth. And that's why, it, it, that's why it gets under your skin so much, because you know I'm right. No, you know what? You you are there are women out there like that, and I know a lot of gold diggers. I right. see them. I work with them. I know that they're out there. But please don't generalize. We've solved the problem. We're not letting women move into our homes. It's that you know, simple. I would never.
never want to move in with the man. I'd want him to value me, and I'd want to be married and know that you know we're. I'm talking to about. Together. I'm I, talking I, about even. I, I don't, I don't want to marry anybody either. I want to live alone in my home, and ever since that's been my policy, I've never been happier than I am today. And the women I date and the women I talk to, uh, they have never been more appreciative of what I bring to the table than they are now, now that they can't get their grubby little mitts on it. But can I just ask, what kind of women do you date or what kind of women do you associate yourself with? It sounds like they're a bunch of pathetic, unintellectual morons that are just out Darling, intellect has nothing to do with it. The ones who are intellectual are the worst. I beg to differ. I'm sorry. Well, you you can beg differ. all you like. I, you know what? I've paid for my husband. How many women have you been married to? Excuse me? How many women have you been married to? I am a woman. I'm speaking How many for women? Boss, no, you're okay? speaking for one woman. How I'm many women? Married, okay? You have no experience. You have no experience with women. You have no experience being married to women. You have no experience living with women. You I just am a don't. Woman, Tom. I have some experience Irrelevant. Of being a woman. So you have experience of being Angela. That's all you have. <laughs> no, I have sisters. I have a mother. I work. I with don't women. care. I don't care. This country has 150 million women, and you're How talking about a very. To, Tom? Uh, How many women have you been married four, to? Four. Four. Four women. Correct. And none of the problems that you had were ever your fault, darling. Again, they, they were my fault. You know, what my fault was getting married. Well, that's a sad, sad. Thing and I to took say. responsibility. It's a beautiful thing, and have I have, ta- I have taken responsibility, it, and hard. I have solved the problem. I am no longer married. I no longer live with anybody. I'm not only the happiest I've ever been, but women now treat me with a new respect, like I've never seen before. Appreciation for what I do. Every little thing I do for them, they thank me. They send me cards and little notes, and they thank me constantly for everything I do. But, but Tom, the t- Type of man that you are, you're very egotistical. Yeah, oh, you, 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 you're, you're talking about your properties and you talk about all of your accomplishments. Mm, yes. Stuff. Yeah, you're. What's you're wrong with that? Attracting a certain type of woman, though. Darling. You're attracting a woman that has nothing of her own, and she has to look for your accomplishments to make herself. I really valued. don't care because you're as long as they don't live in my house, individual. as long as they don't live in my house, it doesn't matter what they're like. Yeah, but look at Evan, how you talk about sex. That's such unfulfilled sex and bang a woman. That's so gross. Oh, not for a man, you it's know, not. I mean, that, if that's the mentality that's... For a man, it's to just have so, one big, heaving, sweaty orgasm and then get out of my house. That's so sad that you think this way. It mm-hmm. just really is sad that... that but here's, here's, what's, here's what's not sad. Hear, here's what's not sad. And I and guys like, like me, are, we are the... Ha- I'm not lonely, life. dear. There's women at my beck and call whenever I need them. Yeah, but what kind of women? Who cares? Just because you want to have sex? Yeah. Well, that's, ooh. That's all it is is sex. Yeah. Well, hopefully someday you get to actually make love. And that's like, you know what? I like. Uh, let me give you an example. The guy who delivers, let me give you an example. The, let me give you an example, dear. The guy who delivers a pizza to me, I only want him there when I want pizza. When I'm done eating pizza, I want him to leave. I don't want him there anymore. I want him to come over and satisfy my need and then get out. Here's, so here's your $2 so tip. No, it's not. Have you ever had a pizza? It's fantastic. What's more fulfilling than a nice pizza? Tom, can I say something? It's sad do I want to get to know? Do I want to get to know the pizzeria guy? Do I want to know the pizzeria guy intimately? No, I don't. I want to know what his innermost feelings are. Couldn't care less. Give me the pie. Get the hell out. You you don't think that it's your nature to have some kind of an attachment to another human being and to have some kind of emotional. There are certain pizzerias I like better no, than we're not others. About that. Come on, let's. Darling, this. it's okay. the sa- to a man, it's the same thing. Like we say, there's no bad sex, there's no bad pizza, and you know what? Uh, the pizza man is a very good analogy. Tom, let's just get away. Certain from the pizza pizzas thing, okay? I like better well, than others. Certain yeah, pizzas no, no, I invite no, no, into my home more often than others. But when I'm done, I want the pizza man to go back to the pizzeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I we don't want that, him right? at my house. That's the bottom line. Oh, I can give you plenty of intelligent answers. What's That's why I'm down here old? at the radio station and you're calling in by making my paycheck so much larger. Go ahead. <laughs> 
what's going to happen when you get older, when you're sick? Who do you want to take care of you? Somebody who loves you and has your best interest in mind? Somebody who... who I will be able to afford the best the help finished, there is. Not because you're paying them to be there, but because they want to be there. They Darling, I'm going to have the best help money can buy, dear. The Tom Likas Show.